dance festivals to the sea sculptures they did on the beach, they did so many things. From the bathing bells of the 1930s, what I go to every concert that was at Cleethorpe's Winter Gardens from being well. So there's a lot of teenagers and adults in the town now who you remember. This one was the reason that Cleethorpe's was really put on the map. Endless names had played this venue, it was so iconic. I just could not believe the amount of people that were standing there in front of me. The popular seaside resort continues to reinvent its entertainment. It's just such a Welcome to the Heritage Channel on Clee TV, where we explore the fascinating history of North East Lincolnshire in a monthly roundup of news, views and other stories. If you're watching on YouTube, click the subscribe button below or on Facebook, join the group to make sure you don't miss any of our programmes. Our programme tonight has literary, art and musical themes as we explore what is being created now that will become the heritage of the future. But first, plans for Heritage Day in Grimsby include a virtual open day on Grimsby Fish Docks where you can find out more about producing the nation's favourite dish and hear the untold stories and legends of the mysterious Caspar. Heritage Day will also be celebrated with a soundscape in St James Square featuring the sounds and stories of our coastal community. Dance festivals to the sea sculptures they did on the beach, they did so go many... to every concert that was at Cleethorpe's Winter Gardens from being 12 years. But heritage isn't just a thing of the past. We are all creating heritage of the future in our lives today. And none more so than the young people of Grimsby who have been working with Youth Action North East Lincolnshire on the Together project. Yeah, so Youth Action are a borough-wide youth voice group where young people come together, meet on a regular basis and work on projects that are uh, improving issues that are important to young people. The National Young Advisors Charity gained some lottery funding that was then um, allocated to each of the teams across the country. Our area, North East Lincolnshire, decided that we would use that funding to hold a competition, allowing young people to share their perspectives on loneliness and isolation and connection um, through different creative means and um, when we looked at all the entries and, and did the judging we decided that there should be winners and runners up in different categories um, and yeah songwriting was one of those and we decided that what we wanted to have relevant prizes and part of that prize was that we wanted to create the song into an actual song um, so yeah so it's been really lovely to be able to to kind of connect the, the young writer with a young musician locally. So the other entries for the competition are going to be, again, working in partnership with Hammond House and um, put into a anthology that will be able to be published. And then, so the idea is that we can share that work with young people in a range of different ways. Oh, I'm always very proud of what they do, but like this has been youth led right from the beginning. And obviously the young people have all entered the competition as well and have got really involved in that too. I mean, the cultural and, and creative um, methods that we've used through this has attracted such a lot of young people to share something that you know with with the, the, the year or, or 18 months that we've just had um creating that kind of picture uh, and writing about what it what it was like to be this will be something that people will look at in years to come to sort of understand how it was for for young people growing up in today's world so yeah they're creating a heritage for the future themselves the Creative Connections Anthology will be published in September. This eclectic body of work shows there are no boundaries to the imagination when you express your experience of life in lockdown through your own chosen media, be it poetry, stories, painting, drawing, or even songs. We'll be your light and your friend, so don't you worry about a thing. Written by 19-year-old Carrie Berry, Don't Worry About a Thing was set to music by local singer-songwriter Amy Naylor. Kerry and Amy collaborated to produce the song and video, and we are delighted to be playing it for the first time on the show tonight. But you know, you're not alone this year. Yeah, we just wanted to say that you are not alone. We are in Your friends, so don't you worry about 
coastal community has many tales of lives lost at sea, including Robert Bewley from the crew of the Aquarius, a Grimsby trawler lost with all hands in the closing months of the Second World War. His granddaughter Eileen and her daughter Elise have been finding out more about their ancestor, the story of the Aquarius and the famous Grimsby Jam. It was a story that I've always known about. My great-grandfather had um, sadly um, was lost at sea. It was near the end of the Second World War and he was on a trawler um, which hit a mine and unfortunately all ten men on board perished. My grandfather, Robert Bewley, was an orphan. He was taken into Birkenhead Union School when he was six years old. He stayed there until he was 14 and then he was apprenticed to be apprenticed for the fishing industry in Grimsby. When he was 30, he married my grandmother. They had nine children and I never met him because I was born three years after he was killed. But my mum always said he was a gentleman. He stuttered. He was a good father as far as she could tell me. I haven't found out a lot about the Aquarius except that uh, there is a memorial at Tower Hill in London. And so whilst we were in London we decided to go to the uh, memorial and it took a while but we actually found the plaque which had the fishing vessel Aquarius on. We actually found the name of my great-grandfather on the plaque. It was really incredible to see this huge memorial with all of these merchant fishing vessels or merchant seamen vessels that were blown up, lost in the war. So then I just thought it would be so interesting to find out a little bit more about um, the actual vessel. So I decided to post on Facebook and we had a huge response from various Facebook groups. The skipper of, who was on the trawler, his, his family sort of got in touch and said that they'd um, also been to the memorial in London. There was also an artist who'd been commissioned to actually paint a picture of the vessel that was lost at sea. In actual fact, I have a, another little story. My mother um, worked at Ticklers, as did a lot of jam factory in Grimsby, as did a lot of young women. Some of them were seconded from there um, to munitions factories. My mother in, went to Worcester. The gentleman who owned Ticklers, his jam, for instance, in the First World War, was sent out, the, the government decided to buy his jam. It was sent to the troops in the First World War who ate the jam and then used the tins and made hand grenades with the tins. And that's all tied in with my family as well because two or three of my aunties worked for this jam factory. And in fact, when my granddad died, um, the then owner of the factory in World War II sent a message of condolence to my nana. Uh, I, I went to the Grimsby Telegraph and looked in their archives and found that uh, alongside all the messages from my mum, her brother and sisters as well. By posting on Facebook about the, the fishing vessel and about the, the tragic incident, um, it really reconnected me with my family, uh, a lot of my family members. I mean, it's always been a huge part of my mum's side of the family, with her being from Grimsby. I think fishing heritage does hold the family together, without a doubt. Visitors to Cleethorpes looking for a friendly pub with good food will find the Punch Bowl just a short stroll along the North Promenade from the famous pier. Overlooking the beach and Humber Estuary, this friendly local has been owned and run by Sheila Stafford and her family for the last 33 years. The Punch Bowl is a firm favourite with local people who enjoy the friendly atmosphere and great value food. It's got a very good selection of food, there's plenty to choose from and it's all very tasty. And I've always come and I've always come back and I've always enjoyed the experience of it. Everyone's real friendly, all the staff know my name and what have you and I just sort of enjoy the time I spend here. Upstairs from the busy pub is Laces, a grand function room with separate bar and stage. On a wedding, of course, we do a full four-course meal, or we can do buffets. Holding up to 150 people, it's a popular venue for weddings and birthdays and a favourite of local musicians. Oh yeah, we are looking forward to welcoming people back into races and into the punch bowl. Whether you're looking for good value food and drink in a friendly local pub or a grand venue for that special occasion, the punch bowl and laces has it all.
Summer is a busy time of year for Heritage Lincolnshire, with a range of exciting events happening around the county, including Bolingbroke back in time, a medieval reactment and jousting tournament on the 14th and 15th of August, a talk on the origins of everyday sayings and build for the future at Lincolnshire Showground on the 16th of September. Paint the Town Proud will be celebrating the cultural heritage of Grimsby with a series of murals appearing on walls across the town over the coming months. Artists from the Creative Start Collective will begin the first one in August at the Grimsby Town Football Club. In other art news, the heritage of fine printmaking is celebrated at the Hammond House Gallery in Louth during August. A display of work by local artists is complemented by demonstrations of the printmaking process. Traditional music is embedded in the lives of our seafaring community, through the 55-year-old Grimsby Folk Club to the long-running Cleethorpes Folk Festival. Lincolnshire holds an important place in the tradition of English folk music, as folk singer Kirsty Hanna explains. Uh, so when I was younger, probably around toddler age actually, <laughs> uh, my mother, she used to listen to a lot of folk records mm. uh, and I just sort of used to pick that up and sing along. Mm. And obviously at that time I didn't really mm. think anything of it, it was mm. just I was hearing it, I was singing along. And it was something that I sort of ignored for a while. Uh, and it got to around 2012 and I'd always had an interest in singing. And I thought, I might, I might give this a go. I might just see, see what happens. And it just felt like a natural choice to come back then to and she singing folk sighed, music. And so bitterly she cried. Uh, I sing quite a lot at Grimsby Folk Club, mm -hmm. uh, which is a, a long-running folk club. It's been going for 55 years, <laughs> um, so a long time. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the same with a lot of folk clubs. They have been going for years and years and years, and it's just great that they are managing mm -hmm. to still keep going. I understand there's quite a fascinating history of folk music from Lincolnshire. T tell me about that. So at the start of the 1900s, there was a composer and pianist called Percy Granger and he became really interested in folk song and folk song collecting. He first came to Lincolnshire in 1905 uh, and then returned again in 1906 and 1908 and during that, those years he um, collected quite a lot of songs from various singers in the county. Uh, one of the most notable is Joseph Taylor which if you know about folk music then you've probably heard of Joseph Taylor and he collected Brig Fair from him again which is really well known in the folk world. It's old music, a lot of it is still really relevant today. You can take things from years and years ago and it's still relatable to circumstances that people are going through today. At home in my north country it was on the fifth of August the weather of unfair unto Brick Fair I did to repair for love I was inclined. I got up with the lack of the morning. Applications for the Heritage Starter NEO programme for community projects of between three and ten thousand pounds will open to Heritage Network members in August. Watch out for the applications opening on the Heritage Lincolnshire website. As we discovered from Kirsty earlier in the programme, music is an important part of the cultural heritage of our local community, and its future is being created now by local musicians like Sam Simmons, Amy Naylor, and an energetic young band from Cleethorpes who write and perform their own music. I'm Connie and I play bass and I sing. I'm Ben, I play guitar and I do a little bit of backing vocals. I'm Lois and I play drums. Originally, uh, Lewis and Ben were doing a bit of stuff together and then they saw me play at a concert and then they decided they liked my singing. That was, I think, November 2019. Well, I've just left year 11, but I'll be going to college in September. I'm in year nine, so is Lewis going into year 10. Funny enough, Lewis is older than me by well, a few I'm, months. I'm very small.
we take all different parts from all the different bands and all the different genres of music and we kind of incorporate in our own music. Louis Capaldi and Billie Eilish. Slash, got a bit of Guns N' Roses. Arctic Monkeys, Raytons, that sort of thing. You can actually hear bits of different genres in all of our songs and there's each song that we write, it's, it tends to be different, it tends to be quite quite on its own. We also have covers, but we tend in our live gigs to try and play more of our own songs than the covers. Yeah, we usually get the basic idea of the cover down, then put our own little spin on certain things to make them stand out from other ones. I don't know, just after lockdown we all came together and it was like perfect again almost. Definitely getting out of it was a huge relief and I really enjoyed um, playing back with Lewis and Connie. I say that they should book Revivalry because we're all very friendly. I think we make our own music very unique and I don't think you really find anyone quite like us, mainly because of our ages I guess and just because yeah we work very well as a team. We're working on more songs, we've got a few gigs lined up now as well so it seems to just be getting bigger yeah. and better really. Yeah and we are actually growing at a pace that was unimaginable before uh, on social media platforms and the gigs that we're getting uh, getting bigger and bigger. I'd say we definitely keep going with this and just see where it takes us really. Yeah. You can find out more about Revivalry and other local solo artists and bands on Book the Band, a new platform showcasing the talent of local musicians. If you're planning an event, it's a great place to check out the best local talent and venues. Well, that's our most all for tonight's programme. If you're watching on Facebook, don't forget to join our group. Or on YouTube, click the subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss any of our programmes. If you have a heritage story you would like to share, contact our news desk, heritage at clee.tv. We hope you enjoyed tonight's programme and look forward to seeing you next month for more people, places and heritage news. Just wanted to say that you are